Luke, this podcast is titled A Manger, correctly so this time, not just a birth, because it has all the elements, or most of them, uh, with a little help from Matthew. We have a census, we have Bethlehem, we have no room at the inn, we have a manger. There is no stable, but a stable can be assumed, and by extension, the ox and the ass. There are angels, lots of them, and there are shepherds, and again, by implication, sheep. However, there's no star, no magi, no slaughter of the innocents, no flight into Egypt. The familiar Christmas story, however, has only 21 verses in the second chapter, but Luke's infancy story takes 180 verses over two chapters and adds a very rich prequel that goes back six months before Jesus is even conceived and a sequel that goes all the way up to his 12th birthday when they find him in the temple. The way that chapter three opens suggests that Luke originally intended to start like Mark did with the a baptism of Jesus in the Jordan, but decided instead to introduce the uh, birth stories for his own purposes. In sum, Luke has a bigger story to tell than just what happened one night in Bethlehem. What is he telling us then? Well, it's all too much to develop in uh, one short podcast, but there are some themes that are important. The first of all is the role of the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist is filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes upon Mary at the Annunciation when she is told she is to be the mother of Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes upon Elizabeth when she greets uh, Mary and they exchange a beautiful exchange about the joy of their forthcoming births. Zachariah is filled with the Holy Spirit when he uh, announces that the child is to be called John. The Holy Spirit is working in Simeon when Joseph and Mary come to the temple to make their offering and Simeon has a revelation guided by the Holy Spirit that this child is the Messiah. This is a much expanded role compared to Matthew where the action of the Spirit in the conception of Jesus is stated as a fact only. Here we get an enunciation describing in detail what happened uh, when the Spirit comes upon Mary and the conception goes forward. Something big is unfolding and the Spirit is moving the whole story along. And this is an echo of what is found throughout Luke, as well as in the Acts of the Apostles. A second theme is the John the Baptist, Jesus parallels. John and Jesus have similar birth stories, but at all points, Jesus is the one that is most important. Make no mistake, John is not the Messiah. John, born to a barren couple. Jesus, born to a virgin. John announced to an incredulous father. Jesus announced to a believing mother. John has a simple birth story with extraordinary elements that suggests that momentous things to come. Jesus has a very dramatic birth story with all the bells and whistles. Mary. The Mary that emerges in Luke's gospel is a very much more developed character than in Mark or Matthew. She has more than a walk-on part. Her, her, her experience and how she responds to them are developed into something like the Mary of traditional Catholic or Orthodox belief, at least in outline. She is a confident actor in this drama and acts and speaks confidently as a model disciple. Like Matthew, the virginal conception, the virgin birth of Jesus is pointed up, leaving us in no doubt that Luke is describing the common belief of the community to which he is writing. The universal mission of Jesus. Luke's infancy story, hinting at a theme in his whole gospel, makes no bones about Jesus being a savior of the whole world and not of just the Jewish people. And he makes it explicit in the prophecy of Simeon when he meets 
Jesus with his parents in the temple after the birth. My eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to enlighten the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. It's also in the song that the angels sing to the shepherds before they go and worship Jesus. Another dimension is the explicit focus on the idea that Jesus has come to be the savior of the forgotten ones of society. He comes to the women, 